Hello everybody and welcome to Chrono Plays in the Real World. Wearable computers. They're freaking everywhere now, right? We got the Google Glass, we got all those Fit watches, the exercise watches, we have the Pebble, we have the Galaxy Gear, and now we have Android Wear, which is Google's answer to all of those other things that worked better. And today I have the LG G Watch. Now, fair warning, before I begin, this is my previous watch. So it's a standard original edition Pebble watch. And I'm basically going to be comparing the G watch to the Pebble watch. Mostly because that's its primary competition. Yes, there are other Android Wear watches that would be more suited to compare as primary competition. But this is the big one right now, the Pebble, because of the price and the functions and the fact that it's been around longer. So this is the big one. That one's I'm gonna, the one I'm going to be comparing it to. So to take a look at the G-Watch, I'm going to have to split things into three groups. And it's going to be a little bit confusing, but that's okay. This whole you know review thing is going to be a little bit confusing, a little bit mm, rough, I'd say would probably be the best term for it. It is surprisingly difficult to give a proper and fair review for this watch. And that's because, as I said, I'm going to have to split everything into three groups. There is the physical hardware, which is made by LG, obviously. There is the software, the Android Wear operating system that's on this thing, that's made by Google, and probably slightly modified by LG for like driver support and that kind of thing. And then, of course, there's the end user, and that would be me. Now, let's start with the hardware. First off, we get this nice, pretty box. And, you know, it's one of those standard fancy boxes that have become far less fancy since everybody and their brother are doing it after Apple started doing it with the iPhone. No, they did it with the iPod first. But they were like the first ones to really package their elect electronics in a really fancy format. And then everybody went, me too. So this is just standard fare right now for electronics. So it's not really fancy anymore. It's what you expect. Inside the box, you get, obviously, the watch, which is a kind of nice watch. But we will get into that a little bit deeper later. We got the manual, which, oddly enough, as thick as this manual is... It's actually the smallest manual I've ever gotten with a watch. And I'm not talking about the Pebble here. I'm actually talking about, like, just sports watches. I have manuals that are at least twice this thick for a sports watch. It's a little weird, but, you know, okay. We have the USB to AC adapter. This is not one of the good ones that comes apart for, like, the people across the pond over in Europe and... Australia and all the other different types of plugs that are out there. Uh, this this is for a U.S. audience, apparently. We have a standard micro USB cable, and this is completely standard. I've been using this to charge a phone and you know all that fun stuff. But this guy doesn't have a micro USB port, so what they had to do was give us a base. And now, I actually kind of like this base so far. Uh, I've had this watch for about two weeks, so it's not been long enough to see if it's going to fail after a set amount of time. But I do kind of like the base. Uh, it's got the standard micro USB input for power. And then it's got these contacts here, which I'm assuming is just basically a flow through for the USB wires go straight into these contacts, which connect on the back here. Now, this is all magnetic. And uh, it's quite nice. It pulls it into place and it holds it into place. And I haven't had a single problem charging it. Now, here's my first comparison to the Pebble. Now, the Pebble watch has these two connectors here. Oops. I bumped the microphone, which is happening to be touching the camera net right now, so it shook the camera. But anyways, these two contacts here are what the Pebble uses to connect to. And... Beside it, there are two magnets, so the connector itself just kind of snaps into place, kind of-ish. 
Uh, and it worked fairly well for the first few weeks that I had it. But after a while, I found that the contacts don't work all that well. So I have to sit there and fiddle with it for a couple of minutes and then very, very, very gently place it down and then back off while keeping an eye on the screen, which of course you have to be one menu over to see if it's charging or not, which it won't even show a battery level now. That actually kind of annoyed me, but that's software. So, you know, you have to be very, very careful and set it down very carefully while you're charging it. But that's not as big of a problem as it would be with this watch. Because, and this will be the beginning of my internal hardware review, this watch can run for two weeks with light use without needing recharged. With heavy use that I used it for, I'd have to charge it once a week. Okay? It was in it was long enough that I never really paid attention to how long between charges. This guy, okay, so I pulled him off his cradle 9.30-ish this morning, and it is almost 9 right now, and its battery level is 78%. Okay, so we're talking 11 and a half hours to get down to 78%. Now, this is with almost no use. Go away. We'll get to that in a moment, too. This, that's with almost no use. Um, with average use, I found over the past two weeks, this thing could probably last you a little over 24 hours. Maybe. Maybe. And there are reasons for that, but those are... The hardware itself, the battery it's, that's in here already is not that powerful. Of course, it's a little tiny itty bitty device. There's not a lot of place to put a battery. So it's kind of understandable that the battery is not that powerful. So what you got to do is make up for it in the software to set in the power saver mode. Okay. And as you can see, as I'm sure you've seen already, right now it's kind of dimmed. But if I tap on it, now we get a brighter screen and you can actually see it. But after a few seconds, it dims right back down again. And that's basically taking the backlight of this screen and dimming it to set it into power saver mode. Now, this is its default setting. You can actually set it so it completely turns off the screen when not in use. But, of course, it doesn't work all that well. Now, this there's an accelerometer built into it. A gyroscope, actually, is more important in this one. Uh, that if you flip it up it turns itself back on. You don't have to touch the screen. It will turn itself back on and brighten itself back up. So the idea is that you're wearing it and you go like this to look at the time and it turns itself back on. However, you can't just turn your wrist like this. You have to turn your wrist pretty hard to get it to actually turn itself back on. Almost 90 degrees. Probably talking about between 85 and 90 degrees. You have to tilt this thing for it to turn on. Now that's counterintuitive. So you're looking at your wrist, but your wrist is at a 45 degree angle and it doesn't turn on. So you have to sit there and flick it to get it to turn on. However, this is still a problem with the gyroscope and accelerometer. So if you twist your wrist just right, you don't have to be looking at your watch to turn it back on. And that's one of the big big problems with the power saver. If this thing is using an accelerometer and a gyroscope to tell when to turn itself on, it's going to be randomly turning itself on all day. And you know what really sucks about this? You can't turn it off. I have looked for two days. I cannot find a way to turn this off. Now, no, I did not just look in the settings on the watch or just in the settings on the phone. I actually surfed online and I found a lot of people are having the exact same problem with Android Wear watches. This is not a limitation of the LG watch. This is a limitation of the software built into Android Wear. And it's very annoying that this setting is not there. However, conveniently, because it's a software issue, with future updates, it can be fixed. And that's awesome. So this guy, charge it every night. 
basically, if you get an Android Wear watch, charge it every single night. You plug in your phone at night, plug in your watch at night. Granted, my cell phone can survive two days on normal use. Ugh. The Pebble, I charge it whenever it gets down to about 20%. You know, it doesn't really give me a problem at all. I love that Pebble. Um, now, I don't have one, but my dad has the Samsung Galaxy Gear watch. Okay, that's Samsung's proprietary watch. I can't fiddle with it because I have an LG, oddly enough, Nexus 4 phone, and the gear does not work with anything but Samsung. I think it works with the Note 3 and the Samsung Galaxy, I think. Um, but I think it only works with those two watches. They might have updated the software. I don't know. I haven't been keeping track of it, but whatever. The Galaxy Gear will run without a charge for two days, okay? And that's with heavy use is two days. My dad says that he can get it, he can push it to a week if he doesn't really use the thing. But I think one of the big advantages that the Galaxy Gear has is that its accelerometer can be turned off. So it's by default, it turns itself back on when you flip up the watch, but you can turn that off. And it probably saved half his battery life right then and there. So the Galaxy Gear actually runs a lot longer. However, I somehow doubt it has as powerful of hardware. Now, inside this thing, okay, inside this little tiny itty-bitty thing is a 1.2 gigahertz Snapdragon processor and 512 meg of RAM, okay? Now, if you're a computer geek from the old days, that's impressive. If you're a more modern computer geek, you're looking at that going, 1.2 gigahertz, that's nothing, and 512 mega RAM, that's also nothing. But I did some math, <laughs> and the math ain't anywhere near accurate. But this little tiny itty-bitty thing that sits on my wrist is more than 12 times as powerful as my very first computer. And I remember all the statistics for my first computer, and I won't go into them because, well, that's irrelevant. But this thing is over 12 times as powerful as my first computer. And it has a better screen, too. It actually, well, no, my first monitor had an 800 by 600 pixel monitor. This thing has, oh, I forget the pixel depth, but it's not that big. It's like 260 by 260 or something like that. It's not that high a DPI. Well, I guess it is kind of a high DPI. It's only 1.6 inch screen. It's not a bad screen, actually. Um, let's see if I can switch. There we go. Okay, so this is uh, just the one of the watch faces. This is the photo screen. And it looks really, really pretty. It looks really, really nice. I was trying to get you a good picture of it, and it doesn't work all that well because I've got a overhead light. And as with most any LCD screen, you can't really see it all that well in the light. It just doesn't work all that well. But it, it's, it's a nice screen in the dark, but if you're out in the sunlight... It's worthless. You can't, you cannot see the screen. Now, this thing is turned up to its brightest. This is the brightest this screen will go. But it, it's not that good. Hi, kitty. So, I'm, I'm horribly disappointed in that part of the hardware. I think that's its main limitation, hardware-wise, is the screen. Outside of that, I mean, the battery life is a little short, but it's not terrible. Overall, I think the hardware does what it's supposed to do, except for the screen. I think the screen's its only limitation. Uh, the Pebble, significantly slower, a lot longer to respond, way less powerful hardware, but the screen is one of those e-ink screens, so the brighter it is, the easier it is to see the screen. Seriously, I could put these two side by side in the middle of the day, sun in the sky, shining down, cloudless day, won't be able to see this one. We'll be able to see this one from a distance. That's how impressive that thing is. But it's an e-ink screen. It's specifically designed for that. 
And, you know, I know a lot of people complain about the size of this watch, but, I mean, it's smaller height-wise, and I think it's only a little tiny, itty bit bigger, yeah, width-wise. And depth... Well, let's see. It's a little bit thicker, but, I mean, we're talking less than a millimeter thick. Thicker, I should say. It doesn't feel like it weighs that much. Um, I'm trying to weigh this evenly. I can't tell the difference. It actually feels like the pebble is a tiny, tiny, tiny bit heavier than the LG watch. But I can't tell for sure. They They feel like they weigh nothing, both of them. And it's not really noticeable on my wrist, but granted, I have very large hands, and my wrists aren't exactly tiny. So, I don't know, I always wear large watches. So I guess that doesn't really mean anything to anybody else. So, it works for me, let's just say that. The larger watches work for me. Now, let's take a look at the software on this thing. Now, the software, as far as I can tell, integrates pretty much directly with Google Now on your phone. Okay, so you can actually ha have, actually have, you know, Google Now pop up. So if we click on it, and it says, okay, Google. So if I say that, now I can actually speak to it. And it does understand what I say. Apparently, it's got a timeout. Oh, but it won't let me, you bastard. <laughs> uh, it does really good speech recognition. <laughs> It does it even better when I can't, or like, it recognize that I sped, said recognition, recognition, or however you pr actually pronounce it. I know I pronounced the word wrong, and it caught it. Um, and it is really good with voice recognition. But this is Google we're talking about here, and I'm on a 4G network, so we, we are talking about Google's servers doing this. So this is Google doing it. It's going through the Bluetooth, which is a uh, new low-power Bluetooth 4 or something like that. Um, yeah, it's actually doing that. Every time it does that, it's doing a Google search. That's what I'm getting right here. Um, and, you know, it's kind of useful. I've never actually found a use for Google Now. Not a real good one anyways. I mean, it, it has some good stuff like uh, set reminder, 4 a.m., Walk the dog. Okay, this is new. Well, it just say it just set a timer. I said four a.m., but it's at eight a.m. Try again on your phone. What? Let's try that again. Set reminder: four a.m. Walk the dog. Nope. Nope. It's It caught walk the dog, but when it said 4 a.m., it thought I said 4, 8 a.m. for some reason. Hmm. What if I do this? Set reminder for 4 a.m., walk the dog. Set reminder for 48 minutes. Four, four, 4 a.m. So it did catch it, okay? It thought it said 4 a.m., or it thought it said 48 minutes, but then it caught itself and changed it back to 4 a.m. That's actually kind of cool. That shows that it's not, like, taking the first result. It's actually thinking about what it's doing, and then it's going back and fixing itself. So when it realized I didn't finish what I said, that it realized I didn't say minutes, I said a.m., and didn't finish the mmm part, it went back and said, oh, he must have said for 4 a.m., not 48 minutes. That's actually kind of cool. But I've actually used that, and it does work most of the time. Okay, we're talking 99% of the time. It actually catches it like it should. And that's great, and that's fine and all. But it kind of doesn't do anything else. Watch this. This one's fun. I love doing this. Show me the weather. Now, it caught everything. It actually said, show me the weather. 
but it gave me a Google search. Okay, so there's no interaction or anything like that. It just shows me a Google search. Let's see if I can do it again. What's the weather like? There it is. There it is. Okay, I don't know if you can see that on the screen, but it actually says, what's the weather like in Mordor? Okay, that that's the funniest thing I have ever done with this watch is when I say, what's the weather like? It shows me where it thinks my home is, okay? Now, this apparently integrates with G+, because on G+, I told it my home is in Mordor, which is a real place, by the way. I didn't actually know that until I typed it in. Google found it. But it doesn't matter that my GPS, and it knows my GPS, is absolutely nowhere near Mordor, which I think is in Africa. Obviously, I'm in the U.S., obviously I'm in the U.S. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I don't know why, but it's telling me where the, what the weather's like in Mordor. It's kind of worthless to me. So, I don't know. What's the weather like in L.A.? And, ooh, it actually gave me real weather. Holy crap. Can I make you a card? How do I make you a card? Like, I'm getting... You know, apparently it's 75 with 8 miles per hour wind and no chance of rain. Ooh, apparently it's all sunny, too. What time is it? I actually forget what time it is. 9.08. Eh, it's still light out over there. Kind of dark here, though. Um, what's the weather like in Springfield? 91 degrees in Springfield. Springfield. What? I have no idea because isn't there, like, a Springfield in, like, almost every state or every state? Um, I don't know. Now, the one thing that really pisses me off about this software, I cannot figure out how to make this thing bring up cards. Now, it can. I have them. When I get an email, I get a card. When I get a text message, I get a card. Uh, every single morning at midnight, the pedometer card pops up. I don't know where the hell it went today. I didn't swipe it away. It just kind of disappeared. Um, show me my steps. Okay, and then this brings up the pedometer. Now, I want to make this thing a card, but I have no idea how to actually make it a card. Oh, show step card on. All right, so if I swipe away... Oh, but it went away. What the hell? Hang on, come back. Show me my steps. Okay, so we have that. So if I swipe, show step card on. All right. Save fitness data, daily step goal. This is all built in. I actually have no idea why it's here, honestly. But, yeah, I told it to show the card. It's not showing the card. And that brings up the biggest problem that I have with this software. It's not terribly intuitive. Okay, now we're talking about something that is speech recognition. Okay, this is something where I talk to it and it actually does something because there's no physical buttons on here. You know, it's the only interaction is swiping, tapping, and talking. And that's fine and all, but this isn't artificial intelligence here. This is a approximation of, well, I guess stupid intelligence. No, artificial, in, artificial stupidity. Well, no. You'd have, to get an a, you'd have to actually make artificial intelligence and then set it to college. Then you can get artificial stupidity. But I don't know really what to describe it. It's a, a very rough approximation to artificial intelligence. Uh, from what I've been hearing, now I haven't had a plan, chance to play with Apple Siri, but from what I've been hearing, Google Now actually does work better than Siri. But I think the trick there is that Google's not trying to pretend you're talking to somebody. Google is saying, hey, you're doing a voice search. We're going to try to give you the best result, but you're still doing a voice search. So your mind's already in that mindset. Now I want to play with Siri, but I only have a, a, a iPod Touch Gen 4. I don't have the Gen 5, so I can't use Siri. Wait, or do I have a 3? 
No, 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 no. I have a four. I have the smaller ones. I don't have the tall ones. I don't know. It's also very confusing. The uh, Gen 5, I don't know, Apple just kind of fucked up on big time. They decided that the cheap one is not going to have a camera. I would have a Gen 5 right now if the cheap one had a camera. But no, they decided that they're going to be cheap out and not put a camera in it. The cheap version of the Gen 4 had a camera. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. That's that's for a different subject and doesn't really matter. But you know what? For the most part, this is all I found. Um, there's another thing, user interface-wise, that actually does piss me off pretty severely. I can swipe down, which will bring up the battery and the date, which hides itself underneath my thumb here. And if you swipe down the whole way, it sets it to mute, which I'm guessing just turns off the vibration function because there's no speaker built into this thing. So no, you can't be calling people on your watch. Come on, there we go. Yeah, I mean, that's the biggest problem. The biggest two problems with this is not the hardware. Even the screen is not the biggest problem. The biggest problem is the lack of functions in the software, okay? And the lack of explanation of what you can do with the software. So the problem is not only the software, but it's me. I have no idea what the hell to do with this thing. I've been looking. I can't figure it out. Now, I do have to admit, there is one thing that's really, really useful, and that is the navigation, okay? So the, the Maps app is designed to work with this thing. So it will actually pop up at the bottom, the navigation. Let's see if I can do this just through the phone. Find, okay, Google, find me a Sheets. Ooh, it caught Sheets. It loves or I love sheets. No. Okay, let's try that again. Navigate to sheets. Ugh. I have no idea what the hell that was. I, I don't know. It just gave me a plus. Hmm. Well, let's look at the examples that it gives us. Take a note, drink more water, remind me to go for a run at 7 a.m., show me my steps, send text to Jim, see you later. Now, I don't know if sending a text message with this thing actually works. I tried. But somebody had sent me a text message, so, and I could swipe over, and I tapped the button that said reply. And I was waiting for it to pop up and say, speak your reply. And it just sent reply sent. So I tapped the button, it said reply sent. No idea what the hell it sent. Don't know if it actually sent anything, but yeah. Uh, apparently I can email Eve, you Friday on, or you free on Friday, that kind of thing. Agenda for today, which I have nothing on my agenda. Navigate to gas station nearby. There we go, navigate to gas station nearby. So navigate to sheets should have worked, shouldn't it? Set timer for 60 minutes, start stopwatch. Set an alarm for three hours from now. Show alarms. Then we got settings, which is a limited thing. We can adjust the brightness of the screen. The always on screen, that's where after it dims, it still shows the time. So the screen is still on. If I turn that off, if I set it to the always on screen to off, it will work better. Like the battery life will be significantly better, but it will function far, far worse, which kind of sucks. Uh, airplane mode off, which is obviously airplane mode. You turn it on, the Bluetooth turns off, and it turns into a watch. A very, very expensive, very, very power-hungry watch. and does nothing else. And then I can turn it off, which I believe there's a little tiny itty-bitty power button right there. And then we can restart, which turns itself, you know, turns off, turns back on. I've had to do that twice so far because I got it to crash. Uh, reset device will reset the factory default. We can change the watch face, and then we can get information about the phone, like what version it's running, that kind of thing. I don't want to click on it in case there's something valuable on here that I don't want to show. Uh, so change watch face. Uh, you guys saw this earlier. 
where I can just swipe through the different types of watch faces that I think are absolutely terrible. All of them, every single last one of them is terrible. Because we got the big ones, which are two numbers on top of two numbers. I don't like that. And that's a common thing is the two numbers on top of the two numbers or the two numbers on top of the two numbers in the upper left corner. God only knows why, because the cards don't pop up that high. Um, then we got the analog ones, which aren't actually that bad, but this is, you know, LCD watch. I wouldn't want to use an analog watch. Uh, then we got these interesting artistic watches, which I have no idea how the fuck to use them. There's another analog one that I can't see because I'm colorblind. Then there's this orbit one. That's another a little fancy one. The only one that I actually found that was actually even slightly useful is just the digital one, which is a black screen, big numbers, tell me what time it is, and we got the date underneath. Favorite watch face right there. Simple to use, easy, rocking. All right, now, there is an advantage to this watch over, say, the Galaxy Gear or, well, the Pebble. And that is because the Android software that's on here, the Android Wear software, is made by Google. Now, that's a huge advantage there because Google tends to give out APIs and stuff for free and everybody pays attention to Google. So you can write apps that work directly with the watch. There are several apps already that work with the watch. Uh, there's a weather app that works with the watch, but it is absolutely terrible. Uh, it's one weather. It's the only weather app that works with the watch that actually works with the watch. And it's absolutely terrible. Uh, it doesn't update itself. And that makes it 100% useless on the watch. Because what the hell's the point of having the weather on the watch if you have to go to your phone and open it up and hit refresh? Worthless. Utterly, utterly worthless. I actually had this thing, the card, the weather card on the screen for two days telling me it was 64 degrees and rainy. And I would look outside and it would be 80 degrees and not a cloud in the fucking sky. The weather app is worthless. A very common set of apps, there's a whole bunch of them, are fitness apps well, that's worthless to me because I don't go jogging. I, when I exercise, and I admit that that's rare, I weight lift. Uh, so fitness apps on this thing are kind of worthless. Uh, the music, oh, God, the music is worthless. M Google Music integrates with this thing. But if I tell this watch to play some music, it plays the I'm Feeling Lucky radio. And Google's I'm Feeling Lucky radio is just not good. Uh, now the Pebble, oh, I love the Pebble's music app. Click the button twice, and then we get the last song that I was playing, which is actually Kingdom Hearts, but that's because the last music I was playing on the phone was me going play some music on the, or the G-Watch. Now, from here, I can you know do all of the stuff right here, leave it on, all that fun stuff. On this watch, I'd have to tap, swipe, swipe, tap, you know, that kind of thing. Let's see if I can actually get it to do something without actually uh, you know breaking some copyrights here. All right. Boop. Come on. Play some music. I might have to cut the audio here in a second. Oh, okay. It brought me up a Google Music search or a Google search for ask Google search on on Android to play music. Okay, apparently, I don't know. Play some music. Oh, it broke. Play some music. Opened on phone. Okay, so now it's playing Linkin Park. Oh, now it's playing Rick Ashley. Okay, let's pause that. <laughs> okay, apparently my phone decided to Rick roll me. I don't know where the hell that came from. Um, but I told it to play some music. It popped up on the pebble. It was nice and pretty. It shows me the music. On this watch, it shows me Rick Ashley. I can swipe up. 
and it will tell me what song's playing together forever which okay was isn't technically a rick roll but you get the joke um and then i have a play pause function right there Oop, but now it went away now i have to swipe again um and i can swipe over which will get me next swipe back which will get me previous and that's all it does that's it which okay that's what you need that's all you really need Okay, but I was really hoping that a screen like this, a touch screen like this, I'd be able to flick through my music and pick what music I wanted, at least my playlist. Come on. This is so obvious here. I mean, this it's a touch screen phone or it's a touch screen watch. I keep calling it a phone though, cuz that's kind of what it is. If you think about it, it's a phone without a without a speaker. I don't know, but I mean Okay, so look at how much information is on the Pebble right now. We got the time up at the top. We got a little icon telling me I'm playing music. We got the name of the artist. We got the title of the song, which I admit is cut off. Then we have the album that it's on, which is also cut off. Then we have the three functions that I can use with the side buttons. We got back, forward, play, pause. And then this button here actually goes back in the menu. All of this information is on this screen. And the screen itself, the actual display portion of the screen, is smaller by a significant amount than this screen. But this screen is also a touch interface, so I can swipe and, you know, if it's a multi-touch, I actually don't know. I never found any information on that. I don't know if it's a multi-touch. But if it's a multi-touch, you can double swipe and all that fun crap. You can swipe up for one control, swipe left for one control, swipe white, swipe down, swipe from the middle, that kind of... You have all of these options... And the options that I am given to play music are play I'm Feeling Lucky Radio. We can see what's playing. We can play and pause it. We can go next. We can go previous. And that's it. There is no other functionality for the music in this thing. And that is, right there, is probably a perfect example of why you should not buy the LG G Watch. It's because Android Wear is not ready it, it seriously is not now the if you're if you need a little bit more push the lg g watch is 230 dollars. you can only buy it on the google play store the pebble is 150 dollars. you can buy a best buy right now well not right now it's 9 30 best buy is closed or do they close at 10 no i think they close at 8 best buy is weird uh, but you, you can go out to best buy and buy the pebble watch it costs significantly less money, and it does significantly more. But I think the, the Pebble has the advantage because it's been out a hell of a lot longer. The Android Wear watch has a lot more potential, but I've said this before with Google. There is a lot of potential there. Whether Google will get there or not, that's up in the air. Um, I mean, they did it with the uh, Android OS for the phone, the potential's there, and they grabbed it. Of course, most of the potential was there before Google bought Android, but, you know, whatever. The potential is here. Let's see if they go for it. I like the open system where anybody who has an app on Google Play can adapt their app to work with the phone. That's cool. Yes, we're going to get a whole shit ton of shovelware, but that's the Play Store in a nutshell. That's any app store. Uh, Amazon, iPhone, Google Play, that's an app store in general. It's just you're going to get a whole fuck ton of shovelware. And that's fine. Okay, that's not a terribly bad thing. Yes, it takes a little while to filter through all the good stuff, but you know what? Okay. You know, it's something you got to deal with, and it's something I accept as a thing. Um, the apps are not here yet for the phone. Uh, like, <laughs> on the box, it actually shows a flight you know, it's like a schedule for your flight or something. I have never actually found a way to do that with this thing. Granted, I've never actually tried to fly anywhere. So it might just be that I haven't been looking in the right place, in the right mindset. But the apps are not there. The software is not there. The battery is just being sucked dry because the software is not there. And that is my final take on the matter. Buy a pebble. Or at least give this thing a year maybe longer android wear is not there yet it's not ready to go and i say this in earnest because there are two more 
Android Wear watches coming out. There's the Moto 360 and the LG G Watch R or something like that, which is like the upgraded version of this thing. Do not buy it. The software is not there. I don't care what LG did to upgrade their phones. The software is not ready to go. Don't go for it. Get a Pebble or a Galaxy Gear because my dad freaking loves his Galaxy Gear. And that's my take on that. I will see you guys in the next episode. And as always, keep playing the game and have fun. And once again, I must apologize for the roughness of this video. I've been trying to actually do this for an entire week, and it is almost impossible to properly review this watch. Um, and I mean, I tried to do it impartially, but as you could tell from my last little rant there, it's impossible, okay? <laughs> my opinion is this watch sucks. Go with the Pebble. I might actually be switching back to the Pebble. I can't believe my phone Rick rolled me.